Hello again fellow RC enthusiasts, it's your host Tom Cogswell from Spectrum RC and in this video we're going to show you how to use the Spectrum Dashboard app with the Spectrum DX3 Smart Transmitter. So normally the Smart DX3 is pretty much what I would call a uh, non-computer radio, right? So you, it has all the controls you need just to kind of run your ready-to-run vehicles, and that's about it. There are some added little features like the Spectrum uh, battery bar, which is pretty handy for those that uh, are using a smart ESC. But if you want to take it to the next level, you can get the dashboard app and connect it to your DX3 using the BT2000 module. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install the BT2000 module, how to connect it to your Android and iOS devices. This is an iPhone, uh, I think it's a 10XR Max. If you're looking for the app, go ahead and check the description below. We'll have links to both versions, the Android and the Apple app. And uh, really, I mean, the, the dashboard app is great. It's a way for you to easily, like you're seeing here, have telemetry gauges right on your phone that you can connect to your, your vehicle and you'll be able to get all these different things. You'll be able to get miles per hour, you'll be able to get the current and the temperature, the RPM of the motor, and you can also use the dashboard app to change the settings on your radio, which is really handy. You, you don't have to go through the cumbersome hold the steering wheel, turn the knob thing to change the travels. You can do it all on the dashboard app. And then also another thing that we're gonna go over is that it's going to be able to change the uh, the way that the AB button works on the DX3. So you can change the different modes, like your momentary and latching modes, and what the travels endpoints are for each of those little buttons. So let's get started. First up, I'm going to show you how to install the BT-2000. Okay, so first up, you are going to need the BT-2000. It's this guy here. Um, it is the SPM BT-2000. And when you get it, it's going to have this little foam block on the back. That's not really anything for installation, it's just to keep and protect these pins. So you just tear that foam block off, and then you'll install it under the hatch on the top of the radio. So if we're looking at the radio, you're gonna open up this hatch, and it's gonna have these four pins right in there. So you got the little port there. All right, so you're just gonna peel off this rubber padding. Like I said, it's only for shipping really on there though. Get that off of there. Just kind of get rid of any excess that you've got. And then we're going to look into this port here. So you'll see those four pin holes there. We're going to take these four pins and you're going to do your best to line it up. Line up the four holes with the four pins and push it in. All right, and then turn it on to test it out just in case. It should be fine. And you'll see the red light will start blinking right there on top. And we're good to go. Okay. And then once you've got it installed into your DX3 radio and you have this slow flashing light, it's time to connect it to your mobile device. Let's go over first how to connect it to a Apple device. All right, the LED is still blinking. We're gonna go down to our phone and we're gonna go to the little Bluetooth looking bar up there. You are gonna wanna make sure that you have Bluetooth turned on. And you're gonna go there. It's gonna search. If you get to this point like I am and you do not see the BT2000 listed at the top here, we're gonna have to bind it to our device. So it's pretty simple. We're gonna pull up our radio here and there is a little bind button on the Bluetooth device there. So you're gonna press and hold that, and it's gonna start blinking quickly. And you're only gonna to have to do this one time. We'll go back to our phone, and we're gonna to go to Bluetooth, and now you'll see BT2000 right there. Let's hit connect. Once you've hit connect, you'll hit pair, and you'll notice that the light is now solid 
on the BT-2000 plugged into your DX3 transmitter. Is it's going to ask this every time you connect to the transmitter. If it sees that the settings are different from what's on your transmitter compared to what's already being read, essentially what's in the app at that time, it's gonna ask you this. Normally my go-to is just from transmitter so you're not changing any settings on accident. So it's gonna take all the settings from the transmitter and it's going to go ahead and recognize them there. All right, and that's how we connect it to an iOS device. Let's go ahead and pull up an Android phone. This is my son's Motorola uh, that will go ahead and connect it to that. All right, so I've got the Spectrum dashboard app pulled up on this here Android device, and we're gonna go over how to set it up and connect it to our BT-2000. So once again, my BT-2000 is blinking slowly. And if we go into our phone, and just like on the iOS device, we're gonna tap on the Bluetooth symbol. And once again, if the BT-2000 is not listed here, we're gonna have to pair it with our phone, all right? So to do that, just once again, we're gonna go to the BT-2000, press and hold this bind button. It'll start blinking quickly. Go to our device, hit that, and hit the top. So it'll, once it's blinking quickly, you'll be able to tap on that and connect. Pair and connect. Yes, we want to pair. And now it's connecting. At this point, once you've paired it, if we turn off the radio, we'll disconnect. So let's say we're just getting ready to go ahead and play with our dashboard app again. We'll turn on the radio. The LED on the BT-2000 will start blinking, but the slow blink this time, you'll hit tap on that and you'll be able to easily reconnect without having to do the pairing again. So essentially it's the same way you would pair between an iOS and an Android phone, just the, the way things look might be slightly different. Alright, now that we've got it all paired up, let's go ahead and kind of button things up and start playing around with our new dashboard app on our DX3. And so at this point, you could just go ahead and put the little cover back on the radio as it came out of the box like that, and it's housing the BT-2000 inside of there. But if you want, and this is why I've got the cell phone mount handy, you can install the little handy dandy cell phone mount in place of the cover. So that's real, real simple. Uh, and it's a, it's a just an easy, cheap upgrade for you to be able to hold your phone on your radio. So essentially just take that off, push it in, it'll clip just like that. Take your cell phone, little thing stretches out like you would normally see on a cell phone mount kind of device. And there you go, there you are. Pretty cool. Okay, so now that you've got it Bluetooth connected to your DX3 Smart with the Bluetooth BT2000 to your smart device and dashboard seems to be working, let's go ahead and bind it up to a receiver with smart technology and a smart ESC and we'll see the multitude of telemetry feedback that you can get and warnings and also how to change some of the settings. Okay, so we are connected and we're getting some of the telemetry info. You'll see I have temperature here, it's a little chilly. Um, you'll have current, so if I pull my th throttle trigger, You'll see current will move and my drive pack voltage. I have a 6S that's got a decent charge on it. So let's go over a couple of settings that we can change. So right here on this dashboard app, you can swipe over. So quickly you can see all the different endpoints quickly here, whether or not it's sub-trimmed or normal and what channels are being used. And then you can go over here and change some different settings like telemetry settings, channel setup, and things like that. But let's first look at one thing that's really cool about this is that there is a essentially a shortcut. So if you uh, press and hold on one of these sensors, one of the uh, graphs that are there, you can change the parameters and turn on the alarms for that, that device. So, and now if we want to kind of, let, let's go ahead and kind of simulate the alarm. So let's make it go to the higher end is just below the, the low. 
or the high is just above the high. And that's the alarm that you'll hear for your voltage being low and you'll have like a little blue highlight on where it's at. Let's go ahead and turn that off. And then that shortcut also applies for all the other gauges that you have available here. So if you wanna change your mile per hour settings, you just press and hold onto that gauge and you can change the settings there. While we're here, let's go ahead and go over one thing that you need to put in for it to output your speed correctly. So there is this section here that says roll out. That is its way to calculate how quickly your car is gonna go per the RPM of the motor. So essentially to find rollout, look at the spec page of the vehicle that you are installing or you can measure it or you can measure it yourself. There is a video that I have that I'm gonna link in the description below to where you can figure out how to do that. It's pretty simple, but it does take a little bit of uh, mathematics. So, and then also you're going to want to set up the pull count on your motor. If you don't know what the pull count of your motor is, look it up on the specs for the motor. A lot of the surface motors are gonna be four or two pull. So this one in particular is a two pull motor. So setting up rollout, We'll just go ahead and slide that to, uh, I think 1.5 is the default, so I'll just set it to that. We'll go back. And now when I pull the trigger, we'll get speed. You'll see the other things are moving up with it. And then you'll also see a top speed indicator there. That's pretty handy. So if you hit reset, that will reset that top speed. Get a full speed. Now that time, According to my rollout and my RPM, we went 58 miles per hour. Pretty cool stuff. All right, so that's the telemetry portion. Let's go through the channel setup portion. So like I was saying, you can change the endpoints on your travels. So if we look at my servo here, and as I turn the wheel, we're gonna get to a certain endpoint. And when you're setting up endpoints, you wanna set it up so that the endpoints hit essentially a stop point, you know, so you're not binding up the servo and you stop. If you press, if you hold the, so let's say we want to have a little bit, <clears throat> so let's say we want to have more left travel. So we're going to hold left and we're going to turn it up until we get to that point. And you'll see it's updating as I move the slider. And then for right, we want it to just be touching that post. And there you go and there you are. You can change your throttle endpoints and sub trims, but you can also change what the throttle limiter switch does on your radio. So you got 98% or, well, it should be 100. I think I tapped it. So we want to go to 100%, the medium switch will be 75, and low, you can make it even lower. You can make it 25% uh, throttle if you'd like. And then if you don't like any of that, you just hit reset, and it will bring it back to the defaults. And then with this being a three-channel transmitter, we're going to go to AUGS1, and you can also set the travel limits for that third channel. Third channel is assigned to this rocker that is right next to the trigger, so that's how you would use for momentary and things like that. But you can also use that third channel with the AUGS point mode. This is really handy, I think, because if you're using this radio for crawlers and uh, something that's got an auxiliary for lights or a dig or some sort of shifter, you can change these settings here. You can change it to latch two position mode. And then let's go ahead and plug my servo into AUGS three. All right, so now that I've got my servo plugged into AUGS three, if I tap my button, we're gonna go to two different positions on our servo here. I can change those positions by changing the slider. Or if we wanna to go to a different type of thing like momentary, now momentary is when I press the button, it's only gonna go, so when you press the button, it goes to one position. When you let it go, it goes to the other position. Same thing with momentary three position. You'll have a high, a medium, and a low position. Pretty handy stuff. All right, and then lastly, let's go through the system setup menu. You can change the name of the driver, so that's where you see the driver up there in the corner. You can change, uh, if you're using this app with the DX2E, you can change the channel count. With the DX3, you're only gonna get three channels, and if you're using it with an AVC receiver, you're only gonna get ABC. You won't be able to use that fifth or sixth channel. Model setup, you can give the model a name. You can kind of give it an idea of what you're using. This is important for this next part with social. Next, let's go over the social media integration. This is actually kind of cool because you can share your top speed runs with your friends 
via social media. So let's get this powered on. So to set up the social media integration, you'll go to the social tab underneath system and setup. And to link the account, you'll tap on the icon, a window will pop up and you'll be able to put in your login credentials for that social media type. You can do that with Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as we see here. So let's do a kind of a test post here. So we're gonna go back to the dashboard. You'll hit the record button. We'll drive our truck. You'll hit stop. And then you'll hit the share icon, these three little dots down there. And you can pick the one that you wanna share. We hit view. It'll save it as a photo like this. You, that you then can share that onto Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, and it will uh, include some text if you'd like for, uh, for that post. So pretty cool stuff right there. It'll either look like the Instagram look or it'll have a more um, landscape look for you. And that's what it's gonna look like when you share it to social media. And that essentially, guys, is how you use the Dashboard app. Really cool stuff, I enjoy it a lot. It's just great to be able to kind of see exactly what's going on and to easily make settings, kind of almost changing your DX3 into a more computer programmable radio. Awesome stuff. All right, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching and happy driving.